Welcome, friends, to another segment of Science Talk. I am your host and resident oceanographer, Jim Massa. Okay. In this uh, report uh, published on the online uh, newsletter, Inside Climate News, new federal report warns of accelerating impacts from sea level rise. The global average sea level is rising two inches, five centimeters per decade and speeding up. But in some regions, the rate is more than twice that fast. Now, if you recall, when I did my first ocean heat content video some seven, eight months ago or so, I actually had part of that sea level rise. And I showed you that there was an average uh, increase for the planet. And it, uh, I forget the exact numbers, but it was on the order of about like three millimeters uh, per year or, or so. But that, that rate itself was accelerating. So increasing more so. So you have here uh, some folks uh, during a high tide uh, inhabitants of was a Goramara Island in India are basically trying to shore up uh, the soil embankment, prevent further erosion against the, the rising tides. So as the uh, rising ocean encroaches uh, on some uh, small uh, bit of land connecting uh, San uh, Agustinillo beaches to the rocky headland along Mexico's southern southern coast. Local fishermen say it's getting harder to find a place to beach their outboard powered skiffs after catching snapper tuna and dorado in the Pacific waters, which tend to be warm. No harbor to boat speed out of the water onto the sand, the driver yanking the propeller out as the bow, the bow, excuse me, hits the dry beach. Yeah, you don't want to ground the prop. That's, that'll ruin your prop real quick. High tides during the last couple of years have regularly cut steep bluffs from the sand, sometimes making it almost impossible to get all the boats ashore. You go on and say, this is new. We knew that the levels were rising, etc., etc. Global warming is speeding up geological change to a pace tangible in the span of a lifetime or even a few years. Many residents of coastal southern Mexico don't know that the sea around them is likely to arise another 15 to 20 inches in just the next 30 years. Okay. So, um, you know, 20 inches, if you take the, uh, the top end of that, you know, an inch is 2.5. So we're, we're talking like 50 centimeters at least. That's a bit. But it's going to differ around the world depending on the location, depending on what the ocean itself is doing. I'll get to that in a moment. Those projections confirmed Tuesday by uh, an updated report from, the, from NOAA and NASA using new satellite data climate models along with a, a better evaluation of historical data going back 100 years. What we're reporting today is historic, said NOAA Administrator Rick uh, Spinrad, who told Americans that on average sea level at their coast will climb 10 to 12 inches in the next 30 years, two feet by the end of the century. Uh, probably going to be a lot more than that. Ah, and that estimate is on the conservative side. Failing to curb emissions will cause even greater impact. Oh, and then when you have the kickback, the uh, positive feedback loops that kicked in, eh, it's going to be more. The report confirms that things are going to get bad fast, said uh, Andrea Dutton, a sea level rise researcher at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. She said the report shows there will be a major shift in flooding patterns on U.S. coastlines by 2050, driven largely by sea level rise. That kind of language, that's Noah sending a red flag warning up, he said. We're grappling now trying to catch up to the changes that have happened because it's accelerated and it's going to be a whole other level we're dealing with. 
We can see this freight train coming from more than a mile away. And it's a runaway freight train. Dutton said the report also raises concerns about sea level tipping points, including a rapid increase in the melting of polar ice shelves that could spur a much faster rise. If the ocean ice shelves around Antarctica start losing stability, or if ice cliffs start fracturing off in huge slabs, the system goes past a threshold. And you can't stop this. Now, you also have thermal expansion from heating up the, the water because the oceans are getting warmer. So you have thermal expansion from that. That will cause a sea level rise. And then, of course, you have meltwater. Now, okay, so you put meltwater in it. Water's a little cooler. So, okay, so it's cooler. It might mitigate, reduce the thermal expansion a bit. But then what happens? That water warms up and then expands even more so. So, you so yeah, you may be melting the ice to put to increase the sea level, and that may dampen the thermal expansion aspect, but soon that water that has been added from the ice melt will then warm its warm up as well, and then that leads to thermal expansion. It resumes. Right now we're measuring sea level rise in millimeters per year. If you cross those tipping points, it will be centimeters per year. You never know where the tipping point is until you pass it. And right now, it looks like we are at or very close to more marine ice sheet instability. I like this. You never know what a tipping point is until you pass it. And then it's like, what? Oops. Oopsie. Kind of blew past it. Then it's too late. Tipping point is uh, clearly close enough that everything possible should be done to prevent Antarctic ice shelves from retreating farther. Good luck. There are also land-based tipping points related to sea level. While sea level rises gradually, it's already close to much of the coastal infrastructure in the U.S. with seawater inundating drainage systems and even some drinking water supply. You have heard me discuss this very point how many times before? <coughs> Excuse me. You get the brine infiltration into the water table, into the drinking water. And we're seeing that in places like Miami, you know, low-lying places. And even more so, you're starting to see it in like the Ogallala uh, uh, Reservoir that underlies the, uh, the plains. And then you then, what? It affects crops. Because if you don't have salt-resistant crops, you increase the salinity, you change the osmotic potential, you kill the plants. Along some coasts, natural features like dunes and marshes may be holding the sea back a bit. That's a fair point. But once the sea rises above those, it then spreads inland. A big concern for Florida, where a lot of the territory is barely above sea level. Yeah, you know what the average uh, uh, you know, height of Florida is? It's like two meters. So Florida is like two meters above sea level. That's the average height, you know, elevation for Florida. <laughs> yeah. Fill to the brim. If you get over the tip, it'll go a long way. Yep. So the report includes a detailed map of sea level rise. Federal agencies and researchers have other tools that could show how sea ri uh, rising sea levels affect American coastal communities block by block. Okay, coastline is going to move. Here's another thing that also, when you look at, I'm talking now more from a global perspective, looking at it from an oceanic perspective, and that is when you, places that are the east coast of continents, east coast of the United States, uh, the east coast of the Eurasian landmass, like off China, Japan, those areas there, east coast of South America, you're going to see, actually, um, it will be the west coast of Africa below the equator. That's what I really should be saying. So you have the eastern seaboard of the U.S., the eastern uh, seaboard of the Eurasian continent, those are the western Pacific, the western North Atlantic. But when you get below 
the equator, south of the equator, then we're talking the western seaboard of Africa, correlating to the southern Atlantic Ocean. Those regions have gyras, and the gyras in the North American uh, hemisphere, you have what's called western intensification. It's east, uh, eastward intensification for the southern uh, hemisphere. But basically, intensification is that you tend to have higher sea level heights where the gyres intensify. So in other words, expect sea level increases to be higher on those places where you have the intensification side of the gyres. That's what I'm trying to say here. And um, the intensification of the gyre is due to uh, you know, the physics, you know, trying to balance the wind stress, the Coriolis parameter, the pressure gradient, etc. You know, I did a whole uh, video on rotating systems explaining all of that. So basically, um, you know, this poses uh, you know, concerns and dangers and threats to a lot of coastal places. Uh, the Maldives have come to uh, come to mind, for example. Okay. Now, it's not just humans that have to worry about global warming, sea level rise. The rapid changes are threatening sea turtles. Because if you flood the beaches where they come out to lay their eggs, where are they going to lay their eggs? Huh? Where are they going to lay their eggs? Coastal bird nesting areas and marshes are being swamped by the ocean. And if there are some beaches, well, you know, the turtles may have to walk, you know, crawl further inland in order to find a suitable spot to dig a nest and lay the, the egg, which means what? When the hatchlings hatch and they're trying to get into the ocean, they have a longer distance to go and they may not have a sufficient energy and uh, to make that tr trip, but also if they have to make the longer trip, you know, they're going to be picked off one by one by whatever predators are waiting. So, so it, that would lead to a decrease in the population numbers. It's, you know, coastal bird nesting marshal air, and marshes are being swamped by the ocean. That's a, impacting them. And here, by the way, is the skeleton of a sea turtle. A warming, climbing uh, ocean is affecting sea turtle breeding. Sea level can go up as much as another 15 to 20 inches by mid-century or more, and so forth. Other research suggests that rapid sea level rise could wipe out coastal mangrove forests that currently protect shoreline communities. A lot of areas, like the marshes, the swamps, you know, mangrove forests, it's like a buffer zone. You get uh, storms, you know, the hurricanes, the cyclones, right, the typhoon. You get the storm surges. It's a barrier. It helps it helps break up these surges, breaks up the battering. It diffuses the energy. If you lose these uh, regions, the marshes, the swamps, and so on, then you allow that energy to just proceed uninhibited uh, inland that can do damage to uh, ecosystems not accustomed to such uh, activities, shall we say. So... <clears throat> Basically, what they're saying is that uh, the sea level rise is going to be more so than originally projected, and it's probably going to be increasing, and it's a lot worse than we think, and it's accelerating, and we're probably already at the tipping point for this aspect, if not already past it, and then when you toss in thermal expansion, you know, melting ice, increasing the water volume, and then that water uh, eventually warms up as well. Couple that with uh, the intensification on one side from the gyra. And, uh, well, not looking good. Thank you for your time. Hello, folks. This is Jim here with Science Talk, asking you to please subscribe to my channel and to inform others of my channel and of the work that I do. Please share to social media platforms that you use. Also, as a reminder, don't forget to click the bell so that you know when I load up more videos. Finally, I ask that you support the work that I do by becoming a patron at patreon.com. 
Details in the description box below. Thank you for your support.